Hi, welcome back to Living a Sustainable Dream. And today we're gonna to talk about kind of how to plan a little bit about how to set up your off-grid solar system. And part of the things that you need to know is right off, what kind of electricity or what kind of appliances are you gonna need or want to run on your off-grid system? So you can budget the size of the solar system. Right. Like how many panels you need, how many batteries do you need in your battery bank for storage uh, to get right. you through each day? So basically we want to talk about all the things that we want, we're going to talk about all the things that we wanted in our home that used electricity, things that were maybe non-negotiable and things that could be negotiable. Right. Right. So what are some of the things that you wanted that you thought, you know what, I really need, if we're going to go off grid, these are the things I really want to have. Okay, well, first off, the, the one thing that was uh, a non-negotiable for me is that I did not want to work with hand tools without electricity. <laughs> I wanted to have my, my uh, miter saw, chop saw. Uh, I wanted to have my skill saw. I wanted to eventually get a table saw. All these things to help me build the house. I did not want to work literally with by hand, hand sawing everything. Forget it. Okay, so you wanted to be able to run your hand tools. Yes. Yes. That was that or your was, electric tools. That excuse was, me. That was priority, probably number one. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, the thing I was not negotiable about is I wanted a washing machine. I just did not want to hand do my laundry, our laundry, all the time. That just wasn't something I wanted to do. If we were going to go off grid, I really wanted a washing machine. So our solution to that was we literally bought a super efficient washing machine that would work within our inverter system <clears throat> uh, on AC. And it was five amps an hour. Right. So, so we knew calculating when we're calculating our power that our the washing machine would take five amps. Right. So that was good. And so when you look at it, five amp hours, uh, our battery bank is six hundred and seventy five amp hours. I figured, hey, what's five amps out of six hundred and seventy five amps? Not a big deal. And so I said Right. Done. Well, but also when we were first planning, um, you know, do you remember we didn't know how big our solar system was though at right. first. But we knew that you wanted to be able to run electric tools. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to have a washing machine. What were some other things that you also wanted? Well, what I also wanted was I wanted to make sure that we had water. Okay, <laughs> so water was right. huge and key uh, to water the gardens, to take a shower, to wash dishes. So water was a non-negotiable. I didn't want to have... Um, oh. To hand I, pump out of our well. I didn't want to hand pump our water. I wanted it to be automated as much as possible, like a regular right. on-grid home. Right. So and we, so it would have to run. So what do you? So in order for us to have water, what were things you were calculating power-wise that you would need? Okay. So the well pump is AC, uh, and that well pump runs. It's about 59 amps hours right. for power. And so to fill up our cistern, we got a cistern, so it, it pumps into a cistern, and then we have a cistern pump right. that pumps into a house to a pressure tank. So then we had that pump too, so right. we had to calculate that pump. Right, and that pump runs probably about mm, maybe uh, three or four amps an hour. Okay, so I kind of calculated that we're gonna be running about 60, 65 amps an hour whenever we were running the water. So by- I needed to fill up. Right, so by watering the garden, we are taking 65 amps of power to water our garden each right. hour um, because it just keeps going and going and going. So we run our water, what, system for the garden and orchard, what, three hours a day, four hours a day? Uh, no, we are um, five hours. So five hours. So we are literally yeah. burning through 300 amps of power a day, estimated. And, and we knew that would be in the summer when we would have the most amount of sun. Right. So you have to think about that too when you're, you know, seeing how much power you can use. What's, you know, what's your, is it winter time? Is it summertime? And, you know, will you have more power? You know, you, if you're going solar, you know you'll have more, obviously, more power to use in the summer because you've got your solar panels just going, you know. Right. And so the solar panels actually cover that. So the first five hours of the day, um, right. I get up, we start watering early in the morning. And so I actually see the battery bank dropping right. rapidly. Uh, as soon as the sun starts to come out and peek over the trees and right. hits the panels, uh, it starts to make enough power to cover all that energy that we're using. So we're literally uh, at probably the, in the evening time around five o'clock, uh, we're sitting at around 100% oh, yeah. fully charged battery bank. 
Well, even uh, before that. Yeah, though. the water's done. Everything's done. And right. we're starting to use it as the sun goes down in the west. Then we're reaching right. our other non-negotiable, which is entertainment. <laughs> and uh, I really do believe that uh, yeah. you may you work hard, but you also play hard. And one of the things I like to do to mellow out is to watch a good movie. Right. Uh, on our DVD player and our 32-inch LED TV, which doesn't take much power at all. So that was a non-negotiable. Right. And when we were looking at, well, we can maybe get into this later, but it, but when we were thinking, okay, we wanted to have some type of TV. We wanted to have some type of, you know, we knew we were going to run a DVD player. So when we bought those, we bought them strictly knowing we want the least amount of power used as possible. We don't want huge phantom loads. This is the funny thing. When we first started off, we were like, okay, let's do a laptop computer. We'll run off the right. battery. And that was that sure. was pretty good. So we just plugged that in. And so when it, when it ran dry, we'd plug it in, charge it, and right. run a movie at the same time. Our 32-inch TV and DVD player takes less power than our laptop computer did. When it was charging, When right? it was charging and running a movie at the same time. Our Your entertainment. Entertainment um, system, yeah they've really come down in power because they're using LED, you know, so they're not taking as much power as they used to, right. which is nice. Right. So what's so another, another, yeah, yeah what's another, another non-negotiable for me was I wanted a fridge and freezer. I, yeah, I just did not want to go. I didn't want to do a cooler. I didn't want to do, um, I'm having to get ice all the time. I, and I wanted it in my house. I, I really did. I really wanted my fridge and freezer in my house where I could just be able to cook, I could do everything, because I knew other things in the kitchen I was not going to have. Um, and one of those not going to have things was a dishwasher. Knew I wasn't going to have that. A microwave. Knew I wasn't going to have that. I knew I was going to be hand washing all our dishes, which is fine. But I also didn't want to have to go then somewhere else on the property or outside all the time to go get my food, to our food. And, and to have to always constantly be working at that. I wanted, yeah, just wanted a fridge and freezer. So... Um, Mark did awesome research to find a fridge and freezer that are great for off-grid. They take a little bit of power. And we have changed since we've been off-grid for five years now, almost six. We have changed our refrigerator in that time. Mm -hmm. But we started out with, and I'll let you kind of explain kind of what we found as far as fridge and freezer if you want. Okay, well, not to, to review our fridge and freezer again. Oh, yeah, the, you can but, look at our video. But you can yeah. look at the video, which I'll, I'll point right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is evolution of off-grid refrigeration. Right. And that will tell you, you're right. And they'll, they'll tell you pretty much what we did for the refrigerator. Right. And I would right. say that the refrigerator is one of your biggest energy suckers of yeah, your Yeah, just home. a regular refrigerator. So if you got a regular refrigerator, it literally takes yeah. power. In fact, I still have my AC refrigerator yes. when we first got married. Yes. And one summer, I plugged it in and said, hey, I'm going to see what I can do here. And I was making ice out of it and having a great time. And It took a lot of power. And it took a lot of right. power what are some other things you, that you um wanted to have babe? i think a non-negotiable for us was internet and so with oh, yeah. the the job that i have i'm a teacher and i do some online teaching stuff with uh mm -hmm. the school i work at in our um, off-grid business i yeah, use the internet yeah, a lot yep the business is using the internet quite a bit yes. and so lots of research and it, internet also becomes part of our entertainment as well you know, watching other YouTube channels yeah, absolutely. and learning from them, gleaning more information or yep. just kind of keeping up on the news. So internet was non-negotiable. Non and when we were looking for property too, we would make sure that, that that piece of property was able to get internet. Because, you know, sometimes when you're in the rural, you, you can't get internet or whatever. So we also, when we were looking for a property, made sure that we could get some type of internet service there. Right. And we did not Just want. We aside. did not want satellite. No, because we'd already had that. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Um, other non-negotiable. Um, well, in order to run our, in order to run Popper's candles, I knew that I would need to have enough electricity to run my melt pots, um, to melt the wax, mm -hmm. and I use a glue gun and I use a heat gun. So we knew that we needed to calculate when we were looking at um, all the power we were going to use in order to get a system that would work for that. That was not really non-negotiable either because we wanted to continue to run the business. We have, have Popper's Candles kind of still uh, be viable. So um, that was kind of a non-negotiable. Yeah, to have the that. candle business running. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, this is kind of a little basic, but I wanted lights. <laughs> um, hey, you know. <laughs> uh, when we first yeah. moved here, we didn't have any electricity and we were kind of building the systems and building everything together. Yeah. And we had... Um, oil lamps and i love oil lamps i love the ambience of them i hate reading by they're them. hard yeah they're not uh, as light they're it's not true. i mean you can 
you can you know work with maybe two or three at a time right. and get something going and and we we have enough oil lamps to uh light and, the house pretty well but and in the winter times if we yeah. want to conserve power we do put our la oil lamps on sometimes so we don't have to always use the led yeah. lights but but we wanted to be able to pretty much any time right you know and the thing was okay so non-negotiable was lighting but the, yeah. the type of lighting that we had was going to be LED no matter what. And right. so we bought the more expensive LED light bulbs at the time, right. not doing fluorescent and not doing incandescent bulbs. Uh, incandescent bulbs were on their way out. Fluorescents, uh, we didn't like the toxicity of them when they break. Yeah. And we also didn't like the power usage. They were probably half of a incandescent. Right. And the LED is one-tenth of an incandescent. So Crazy, huh? Pretty yeah. amazing how the LEDs have come up uh, and yeah. love them. So. And we have lights everywhere. So we, I mean, the LED lights are awesome. We are not without light. So that was, right. it's awesome. Then as far as the kitchen goes, um, there were some things too that I wanted to be able to use as far as appliances. And um, I have a KitchenAid mixer. I have um, my food processor when I'm canning. I wanted to be able to use that without having to really worry about power. You know, oh my gosh, can I use these things? Oh yeah, we use a blender quite a bit. And then in the summertime, we have a little toaster oven that we use for cooking instead of always putting on the big oven, which we have a propane in the summer. Um, so that was nice. But we knew that we could probably use the toaster oven because in the summer, we have so much power. that. Um, but we put that on the list so that we could at least be able to use that sometimes when we wanted. Right. And we're both uh, coffee drinkers. But what we did is we got rid of our coffee maker completely, the we electric did. one. And we went to a French press right. that we boil the water off right. of our... Um, propane wood uh, pro propane stove right. in the summer right. and our wood cook stove in the winter time right and so we don't have to use electricity for the um, coffee coffee maker so as far as like for me a hair dryer and a curling iron I wanted to be able to use those if I wanted um, mm -hmm. I think is that kind of it babe with as far as um, our non-negotiables I think those are our non-negotiables so I those are the things that we wanted if we were gonna go off grid that we were going to make sure that the solar system or the whatever we we're going to use for our power source could accompany that, huh? Right. Or could support those things. Yeah. Uh, the ones that had to go is we got rid of, well, we already talked about the coffee maker. Right. But we had to get rid of the electric stove. There's no way True. you can do an electric stove right. or electric <laughs> range or electric oven. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, you're looking at, so just talking about power, you're looking at about 3,500 watts or 5,000 watts per hour. So if you're baking uh, your potatoes and having a big potato bar, you're looking at probably losing 5,000 watts of your battery bank. Now my battery bank, which is a pretty mid-range battery bank, is 16 kilowatts or 16,000 watts. So having an electric oven would take one third of my entire battery storage. Wow. So those are things that you gotta look at and go, yeah. okay, that's gone. So we got a... Propane, propane uh, stove and stove. oven for the summertime. Mm -hmm. And that, then in the winter, we use the wood cook stove. And it doesn't take any electricity whatsoever. Right. Uh, our clothes dryer, all we do is we use the outdoors, and we yep. have our outdoor clothesline. And we also I wired some indoor clothesline, and I got a blog post on that if you want to see that. And if you want to see um, what it actually looks like, if you look at our washing machine um, video, it also shows kind of how I hang the clothes in, inside. Right. We did not have any clocks in the house that are plug-in clocks. Right. We use mostly our cell phones, and right. I have an eight-day <laughs> yeah. uh, hand wind-up um, mantle clock yep. that I use yep. from probably the 1930s or 20s. Right. So it takes no electricity whatsoever. It's, right. it's a counterweight swing and a wind-up. So and we also couldn't have an electric water heater. Yeah, electric water heater, forget it. Amir. Which we've talked about but in other videos. Yeah, so we just uh, changed out our current temporary hot water with a tankless. tankless propane water heater that goes throughout the entire right. house. And then we use our wood cook stove to heat the domestic hot water through the house there right. uh, in the wintertime. So we don't have any electricity whatsoever uh, into our hot water, except for maybe a little bit of a phantom load on the computer. Yes. On and the you, propane tankless, which right. is not a big deal. And you looked at it and you're like, it was, it's hardly it's anything minimal. to work. Yeah. It's minimal. I think it's less than an LED light bulb. Right. Uh, so those are some things you got to think about is if you have an electric water heater, and I kind of talk about that a little bit, it is on when you're not even using it. It's continuously heating that water. Right. And the biggest waste of power in your house, the biggest wasters <laughs> are number one, your hot water tank. Yes. The second one is your refrigeration. Yes. And your third one is your electric stove. 
If you could get rid of those three, and you your would dryer. Cu- oh, and your and, and your, your clothes, clothes dryer. dryer. If you can get rid of those, if you four, can get rid of those four, if you could somehow supplement those four, you would have little to nothing in electric bill. Right. I think that's pretty much our list as far as our non-negotiables and our negotiables on what we when we, when we went off grid, the things that we wanted to make sure we had. So then, when Mark was looking at solar systems, because we knew we wanted to do solar, so that was mm. the, how we were going to power our home. So when Mark was starting to look at the solar systems, he had all our lists down. Okay, here's what we want to have. And then he looked into everything and how much power it would take. Mm -hmm. So when he looked at solar systems and started talking with people, we knew how much power our house was going to pull. And that really helped, didn't it, to to know how big of a system we needed, you know, and how many batteries, how many panels, blah, blah, blah. So I hope this helped you. If you're thinking about living off-grid or if you want to cut some of your power down in your home, that um, some of these little tips and how to maybe start thinking about how to cut things back, what's priority, what's not priority. Um, Yeah, to help you save a little bit of money and to get you prepared to uh, get your off-grid system. Yeah, and so really kind of think about even if you're not going off-grid, that your on-grid system could really benefit from maybe cutting your electricity use. And then you can take that money that you're saving and put it into other places. So thank you for your time. And we'll see you on the next video. See you on the next video.